Calaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., where there's no chance of us paying for satellite radio, this is Ballot. Today, we've got a doozy for you. Not only did Howard Stern work on a Friday, I am working on a Saturday. President Biden surprised everyone by popping into Howard Stern's studio for an impromptu interview, where he dropped some bombshells about debating Trump, contemplating suicide, and even handing over salacious photos to the Secret Service. We'll also explore the ongoing petty feud between the Biden White House and the New York Times, and why the president seems to prefer shock jocks to mainstream media. So buckle up. I guess when you're the leader of the free world, you can pretty much call up any radio host you want and say, Hey, mind if I swing by for a chat? And boy, did Biden make some headlines. When Stern asked if he would debate Trump before the election, Biden said, I am somewhere, I don't know when, but I am happy to debate him. Talk about a firm commitment. I'm sure Trump is already practicing his best wrong and fake news interruptions. But let's not forget, Trump has a bit of a rocky history with debates himself. He skipped all of them in his own primary this year, withdrew from his second debate with Biden in 2020, and even prompted the Republican National Committee to break up with the debate organizing body. It's like Trump treats debates the way he treats his marriages. Commit, then quit. And speaking of Trump's debating skills, remember when he showed up to the September 2020 debate after testing positive for COVID-19? Talk about a super spreader event. I guess when you're Donald Trump, you think the rules don't apply to you, even if those rules are designed to keep everyone else safe. But back to Biden's interview. He covered a lot of ground, from the deaths of his first wife and daughter to meeting Jill Biden. He even admitted to considering suicide at one point, saying he thought about drinking a bottle of scotch and jumping off the Delaware Memorial Bridge. It's a heavy topic, but props to Biden for being honest and encouraging others to seek help if they're struggling with mental health. And can we talk about the salacious pictures that women used to send Biden when he was single? Apparently, he just handed them over to the Secret Service. I bet those agents have seen some things that would make even Howard Stern blush. But perhaps the most interesting part of this whole story is the petty feud between the Biden White House and the New York Times. Apparently, the Times is obsessed with getting a sit-down interview with Biden. While the White House is annoyed at the paper's coverage, it's like watching two exes fight over who gets custody of the dog. So there you have it, folks. President Biden, the man who prefers shock jocks to the mainstream media, is ready to debate Trump, has a complicated history with the New York Times. Just another day in the life of the American president, right? Well, well, well. It seems our old pal Donald Trump has been crying foul about his ongoing hush money trial, claiming it's election interference and preventing him from connecting with voters. Your fearless leader spent his one day off from court diligently campaigning and fighting for your votes. Just kidding. Trump actually went golfing. That's right. Instead of hitting the campaign trail, the Republican presidential nominee decided to hit the links at his Bedminster golf club. I guess when you're Donald Trump, you have to prioritize the important things in life, like working on your swing and avoiding actual work. And if you don't believe us, just ask President Biden's campaign. They released a statement about Trump's campaign events that day, and it was short and sweet. He had none. Ouch. Talk about a burn from the Biden camp. On Thursday, Biden's spokesperson, Amar Musa, really let Trump have it. He said, We found out where Trump was. He was golfing, not campaigning, golfing. Musa went on to say that when your entire campaign is about seeking revenge and doing nothing to help Americans, it makes sense that you wouldn't feel the need to actually speak to voters. The truth is, Trump's golf obsession and manufactured outrage over his legal battles just go to show how little he actually cares about his followers. He's happy to incite and enrage them from afar, but when it comes to actually meeting them in person and hearing their concerns, well, that's just par for the course with this guy. And that's a wrap for today's episode of Ballot. Portions of this program may have been created with the help of AI. Or maybe not. Who even knows anymore? Join us next time as we continue to navigate the twists and turns of the American political landscape one shocking revelation at a time. Until then, keep your ears to the ground and your eyes on the headlines.